Hey everybody, it's Matthew of Mr. Domestic, and in this video, I am going to show you how to make this amazing Oh How Sweet zip case. I got permission from Melissa LeBray of Oh How Sweet Company to show y'all how to make this tutorial that she has. So make sure to check out the tutorial in the description below. And this, honestly, it's the perfect case, which is why I'm so grateful that she allowed me to do this. Look, there's a zippered vinyl. Look at these pockets here. There's a center thing. You can add a little elastic there that zips up up with ease, perfect to put in your purse or backpack or bag. I have made at least five of these and I plan on making a bunch more. So if that's what you're here for, before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's have some fun making this Oh How Sweet zipped case. So these are the pieces that you need for the Oh How Sweet zipped case. I've already cut them out. The dimensions and measurements are in the tutorial slash pattern that Melissa Created. You can find that in the description below to her blog post. So I have two binding strips. I have the two pockets, the center piece. These are for the zipper. I have the 12 by 6 vinyl cut out. I have the lining piece, the exterior, some Annie soft and stable. That's the size of the length. Then I have the two zippers per the requirements and then some mid weight fusible interfacing. And finally, I have my binding fabric all done up look Brrr, all done so now i am ready to prepare and get some sewing on and the first thing that i am going to do is fuse the soft and stable to the exterior and then quilt it which i will do off camera now i finished quilting this and as you can see i didn't put any lining on the back just quilted right onto the Annie soft and stable, but this is an optional step. So you don't have to quilt it. You can just fuse it to the Annie's and be done and then move on to this next step. So I'm gonna put this aside for a while. And then now I have the lining and I have the centerpiece and the two pieces that are gonna go with the zipper. So why I've lined them on here, it's my ironing pad, wrong side up. This is how I prefer to add interfacing to stuff. Is to just line them up against each other then take a big old sheet like this, lay it on here, and then fuse it. And then I'll cut it after. It's just less um, brain work for me because <laughs> I don't want to like have to search the pattern to find like how big I need to cut and stuff. And so um, this is just something that I do a lot of. And it's gonna come right off. Just shift it like this right here. So now that this is done, I'll remove the pad and then just trim it out. And now these pieces are good to go. And I'll do this right here, but I'll fast forward just because it's cool to watch cutting and fast forward. And now I'm ready to do the pocket side. These are the pieces, the rectangles fold them in half like this, make it really extra crispy. Do this one too, make it super extra crispy. And then these are gonna be bound. So these are not interfaced, we're going to bind that. And then I fussy cut this to where the hearts are gonna be right on the edge in the front. And essentially you're gonna take the back, flip it like this and stitch at 1 8 flip it over and then stitch again. If you've watched my binding videos, you understand what I'm saying. If this is your first time, come with me to the sewing Now I have one of the pockets, this is a smaller one, and then one piece of binding. Since this is what I want it to flip over, and then this is the back, I'm gonna flip it to where this is this way. And then if you wanted to, you could clip this in place, but it's short enough to where I feel like it's gonna stay in place. And then I am going to estimate an eighth right here and then just stitch up this line Yay. so now this is where hopefully the fussy cutting magic works i need to take this off camera and press it so i'm going to press this flat and then it's going to fold back over here oh! and press that flat and then I'll stitch that in place. So I will be back with this all prepared. And ready. It is nice and crispy, the edge. This is going to lay beautifully, just so you can see the back. 
that's what it looks like. Just a little bit that is there. And now I'm going to edge this, this in place. Right here, and I'm gonna do this slowly since it's one of the few stitch lines you'll be able to see. I want it to look ting ting, so I'll fast forward now. So yay! Oh, beautifully edge stitched here. This is lovely. I'm so excited. So I'm going to do the other pocket the same way, and then I'll come back and show you how I create the divided pockets for the front pocket in a second. Okay, so OMG, y'all, I actually used some pins, one right here and one right here. Yes, I know how to use them, and I've aligned the raw edges on the bottom and the side, putting the smaller pocket in the front, and then I drew lines. This is at three and a half. This is at three and a half, and I did these at one and three quarter inch. And all of those measurements are in the Oh How Sweet Zip Case tutorial that Melissa did. But now I am going to do the pockets. And I'm going to start right up here. And as you can see, I'm starting kind of like on the edge of this binding, and I am going to back stitch until I get to the end of the binding. Now, forward stitch. Over here, just so you can see it as it's being laid out, what to expect. So, I've done these pockets. They're gonna go somewhat like this. There's gonna be the center thing that's going to hide this seam, but we're gonna get to that later. I do want to line it out because I'm alternating the hearts. And then the vinyl is going to go under this center strip like this. And then one of these zippers strips, then the zipper, and then the other zipper strip. So that is how it's going to be assembled. So now I'm going to move this aside, move this aside, and construct those together. And essentially, since it's easier to show here, it's going to be putting the right side of the zipper like this, stitching it up, then folding it, and then edge stitching. This will make sense now over to my sewing machine. So now I have these lined up to where it's the front of the zipper with the right side of one of the zipper tabs. And now I'm just going to stitch. I'm gonna try doing it at a quarter of an inch here since this is a bigger zipper. Uh, the only problem is I don't feel like changing my zipper foot. <laughs> So we'll see if I can do it here. <laughs> Ta -da. Right here. Keep going. Can I do it? I might be able to do it. Yes, 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 yes. I did it. <laughs> okay, so. So now all of this is attached here, and I'm going to essentially fold this over here. I'm gonna take it to my iron and press it flat, like crispy, and then I'll come back and I'll edge stitch this in place. It's pressed right here, these are the raw edges. Essentially I'm going to edge stitch here, which is going to be decorative, and it's going to reinforce this seam, which is a high utility seam. So let's go right here. And I am edge stitching. La, va, va, boom. Yes. So see? Beautiful edge stitching. And then this is what the back, it caught that. So this is secure. Yes. Now I'm going to do the other side off camera. And then when I come back, I will show you how to attach the vinyl. So now the final part of the construction of this, I have the vinyl using clips here. And I used clips on all of these intentionally so that you don't accidentally use pins here because once you poke a hole in vinyl, it's there forever. So now I am going to do about a quarter of an inch right here. 
and I think with this foot it should be fine. But if for whatever reason the vinyl sticks, you can put like a piece of paper here. Like let's say I was gonna use it, I would put paper here, stitch through the paper, and then it wouldn't be an issue. Or you can use that Teflon foot or a roller foot. But I believe with this foot I'll be fine. And the vinyl, I'm not going to encourage y'all to um, <laughs> use an iron, so I'm gonna go ahead and go this way. And I'm just pulling on it as I go. And then, hold on, let me show you something. I could already tell that it was gonna stick, so this is a piece of paper that I'm just gonna put right here, on top right here. Doesn't matter where you put it, it's gonna perforate out, but this will keep the vinyl from sticking on to this. I'll just go. Okay, so I have put clips, putting the zipper pocket on one side and these pockets on the other. It does actually go this way where the rod just line up. And this one I trimmed per the instructions to 10 and a half by seven and a quarter to make sure that it fit perfectly. And now I'm just gonna take this off camera over to my sewing machine and baste stitch all the raw edges, which a baste stitch, if this is new for you, is essentially a stitch that's longer. So I'll probably do it at four millimeters length. So I'll baste stitch it, bring it back over and show you the construction of the- I've done a fun. couple things here in preparation. I've already basted it and if by chance any of these basting stitch you're able to see after we bind it, then it's easier to remove because it's longer. And then here is the centerpiece. I'm not going to add the elastic to this as in the pattern because I never use it personally, but if you want to, Melissa's instructions are perfect. Make sure to print out that tutorial and it'll help. So I have marks right here on the seven and eight inch lines from this 15 inches that creates the center. And then I folded this over added wonder tape and this wonder tape that I'm using here is tacky enough to where it will stick without being heat set but I'll probably heat set it anyway just because it'll scare some of y'all heat set not vinyl don't do it <laughs> and then I'm almost done removing this And as you can see, it folded over the hearts. At first I was like, wow, but it was definitely like a too much cowbell situation going on. So I'm glad that it's gone. And now I will just line these up here, right here. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Ta -da, ta -da, ta da Good to go. Let me just heat set this side. <laughs> Let me go ahead and use it here. As long as it's brief, I find that I don't melt it if it's on medium heat. I've never melted my vinyl yet. So now I'm going to go edge stitch this off camera and when I come back we're gonna put it all to I thought I was recording and I wasn't but I can't like go back but <laughs> I'm just gonna show you what I did here so to round off these edges because you have to round off these four I just used a spool of thread and I put it like this and then this is pretend like this is part of it and then I used a pen to trace around this like that and then with scissors, I find scissors, this is a micro perforated Tim Holtz scissor that I find it easier to cut with these because it doesn't allow the fabric to slip. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Use this to draw the curves on all four, trim them with scissors. And then now it is time to add the zipper next. So the next thing that we have left, look at this, it's getting so close, is to put this zipper down. And it's going to go to where the outside of the zipper is on the outside of the case. So that's why I'm putting this here. And I'm gonna unzip it, unzip it, unzip it, unzip it right here. And then I'm lining the end of the zipper up there. And then now I'm going to fold it over. See that? And it's just getting it out of the way. And then now I'm going to clip this in place. And I'm going to use clips all the way around every four to six inches right here. And I'll show you what happens at the curve. So I'm gonna go right to this, which is right before the curve starts. And then, and this is a trick that will work on any zipper that you are working on. 
that, see, if you try and go it around, it's not gonna work. So what you need to do is snip it. I'm snipping a little bit shy of what will get into the binding. See, ooh, that just curves over so easily. And then I'll get this in place. And then I am going to clip here. And then this will come inside right here as we attach the binding. And then when we close it, it'll flip over here. See? So now I am going to, I'm going to just baste it right here before I even mess with the binding. So I'm just going to do that, get the zipper in place, and then I'm going to attach the binding. So head with me over so to now this I'm one. using, I did put my zipper foot on. I needed to stop pretending like I didn't need to use a different foot. And so I am going to baste stitch just around to keep the zipper in place. But if I need to remove any of the stitches after I put the binding on, I can. And I'm just gonna get you around one curve and then do the rest and fast forward. So remove it. See what I'm doing here, how I'm getting in there. There we go, see, just one around one curve. And it's gonna be the same sewing motion and the same foot whenever I attach the binding. But this is just getting that zipper like there. So you're not like shifting a bunch of different layers and it'll make it easier. So now I'll fast forward. Okay, so now I have basted this in place. Oh, it's coming so close to being done. The only thing that's left is to do the binding. I am going to hand bind. Eek! I did say that, but I'm gonna hand bind. I feel like it looks best doing that with this than machine binding, but you can optionally re machine bind. The first step I will do on my machine. And I'm going to start over here and leave some extra, like here, right here, there, make good. And I'm just gonna clip around like I did before. ready to sew the binding on. And this is where I left excess here, excess here, and I'll show you how I join them. And if any of this is too fast, I have a machine binding made easy video on my YouTube that goes into binding in more detail. But let me start here. And I'm using my same zipper foot. This just seems to help because it already has like the quarter inch here. And then I'll keep that zipper out of the way. So now I'm just gonna go around. I'm not gonna rush this because the more precise I am sewing this in, the better it will look in the front when I hand bind it. So let's get around here. I'll get you through the zipper part in real time. So knowing when you're passing over the zipper, yeah, it's thicker than a normal, but see right here, I feel it, I feel it. It's not gonna go through because there's plastic. I just lift the foot up a little bit, move the needle, maybe forward a couple millimeters just to get it in there. And now it's good and it will continue sewing. So I made it to the other zipper and I just wanted to show y'all 
that I am hand cranking beyond it because this is the together part and there might be, see, boom, 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 boom. It's not gonna go through. If I didn't do this trick, then it would have broke the needle. So now I found a space for it to get in and now it's gotten to the other side of the zipper. And that's how I get through like thicker zippers or metal zippers. If you're using a polyester or a universal zipper, you can just sew right over it. But these thicker ones, that's the trick. So now I'm towards the end. I'm gonna back stitch right here. I'm gonna throw those clips out of the way. And then show y'all what I do. And this, once again, will be seen better and my machine binding made easy, but this is an easy way. Just pulling these taut right here. Let them kiss right here, right? Until they're the maximum tautness, but not overstretching. And then like this, then I will fold it. See, I folded it like that. Can you see it like that? And then I am going to cut off this excess that does a cool math thing. And then now I can join them going from corner to corner. I always estimate this because I want to. <laughs> but once again, there's a more slow down version in my machine binding made easy video. So I'm not even gonna change feet. Okay, so the needle's in there. And then, now let me loosen this up a little bit. Just like this, right here. And then I'm gonna pull this taut, like so. And then I'm gonna sew on the diagonal. Now I'm gonna make sure that the tautness is correct correct tautness, and then I'm going to trim this excess and then continue stitching that up. So now, the final thing that I'm gonna show you in this video is that this is, it's almost done, it's almost done, but all we have left to do is to flip this over and baste it to the front. You can either clip baste it, glue baste it, pen baste it, and cut out all of these little thread stragglies. You can get them before or after, but before is better. So now, just pulling it, see? As taut as possible there, because you can't really heat press it since there's the vinyl. And I'm just gonna put it here, clip it all the way around, following that right here. Here. The one place you might want to go ahead and heat set it is the corner, and I'll show you one corner just because it helps form the fabric of the corner. So now I'm to the corner here, and I am going to use a little bit of glue just to glue baste it. So I'm going to stick it over there on the stitch line, the glue. Don't need a lot of it. And then this is where the iron will come in is it will help form the corners. And if you use bias binding, and that's the fabric cut on the bias, then it will set great here because of the stretch. If you didn't, then it would be a little bit harder. So now this one's set. And I'll go ahead and clip it in place while the heat right here, like that. So one is done, yay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of it. And then I'm going to take it to my couch and I am going to hand bind it. There is a video that I've done on, on hand binding. Go ahead and watch that because I'm not gonna include it in this video. And then you have got yourself a lovely Oh How Sweet zipper case. Okay, so I skipped the 
clips and I went with glue basing because the corners were not being super awesome. And I'm just gonna show you something. This binding, I mistakenly did not cut on the bias, so it was straight grain, and there wasn't a lot of pull here. So look at, I'm just gonna show you. I'll let this be a teachable moment. See the puckering on the corners? If you use bias binding, so cut on the diagonal, you're able to get these corners a lot more taut. And when you fold it over, then it is like ting ting crisp. And I'll show you some of the corners of some of my other ones that I've done in images here. So you can just see the difference. But now I'm gonna go take this to my couch on Father's Day and hand bind this and hang out with my lady. So ta-da, there's one more thing. I'm gonna show you the zipper pull when I'm done hand binding. So I'll be back and the binding will be done in one more thing, yay! It's all bound. Look at how beautiful this is. Like I'm in love with Shan Holland's new fabric collection. This came out beautiful. The only thing I'm going to add is a zipper cover. And so I just, this is like a seven inch strip and I folded them towards the center. And now what I'm going to do is I'll take this like this, just so you can see, I'll show you the fold. See, forward to the center. And then I'm gonna fold it this way, like this. And then now I'm going to, just so you can see, it's gonna be a half inch seam allowance. I made it two and a quarter inch wide. So this is gonna be a half inch seam allowance on both sides. And then that's it. So yay, this is what this looks like right here, the two seams. Now I'm gonna trim it right here to quarter inch. And then now I'm going to flip it right side out. Right here. And I am gonna push it all the way in. I just wanted it to be a little bit chunkier but you can pull it as far out here and for this i'm going to tell you all the truth i'm going to glue this i'm not going i don't want a, a stitch here and i can't really applique this if you wanted to put a stitch line here then go do that but i'm going to glue it because i want to keep this seam and that seam matching <laughs> So now you have learned how to make this Oh How Sweet zipped case. I hope you love it as much as I do and plan on making a bajillion of them, if not a bajillion in one. So if you got any tips or tricks or laughs in this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check the description below to find the link to Melissa's tutorial in PDF where you can get all the measurements, all the descriptions, some tips and tricks that maybe I didn't share in the video. So if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and keep it positive, Mr. Domestic. Guy.